G'day guys. Uh, I'm here with Rob Castaneda. How are you Rob? Excellent. How are you? Good. And you're going to talk about your journey to America. Yep. Now what is Service Rocket and what is your company? Sure. So uh, Service Rocket, we were founded in Sydney in 2001 mm -hmm. uh, under the name Customware. And uh, it's quite fitting that we're talking about the US journey because we had to change our name because of the USA. Why did you have to change your name? So um, somebody owned the trademark to our name. In Customware. The, in Customware okay. to the, the name in the United States. And that person had registered it um, the year I was born. Right. So we didn't really have a, have a leg to stand on. Well, so that's, a, that's a hot tip. Don't create a company <laughs> in Australia until you've done a US check. Yeah, well, that's well, the first one is, well, you know, just when you move, just make sure you're, you're aware of uh, the names. Um, and so what we do is we focus on training, support, implementation, and tools, and helping other software companies grow. So whereas with SSW, you guys work with Microsoft, we work with fast-growing software companies. So Atlassian is one. Box we is work one. with fast-growing software companies too. <laughs> <laughs> As in, you know, smaller startups that are up and coming. So, yeah, okay. and, uh, <laughs> so you build stuff on Java. So predominantly Java, JavaScript, and, and uh, other platforms. Right, okay. Um, but, but our focus is actually uh, selling to the software company and helping them grow, and then them together working with their customers. Right. So you... you uh, do consulting and you sell uh, some products, right? Correct. Okay. Now, did you have? Were you making any money from Americans um, before moving there? <clears throat> yeah. So, um, so I had worked in the U.S. for a year and then come back and started the company. Mm -hmm. And so, the goal of the company was always to help Silicon Valley companies come out to Asia Pacific and do training and and roll out their products. So. Uh, I think by 2009, we had about 15% of our business right. from US enterprise customers. Okay. Um, and they were just paying you via credit cards? Or yeah, they're paying, they're paying us paying? remotely, yeah, send yep. us in, sending us checks in the mail. Um, right. You know, okay. When we complete the job, and then you'd have to get it cashed in. It took a yes. couple of weeks to get the money. And you lose uh, a fair chunk of it. You lose a little bit of money. But yeah. no, but there are ways with, with uh, great banks you know, that we use that help speed that up. Okay. Um, so you're getting 15% and yep. you say, all right, let's move the business or let's open another branch in America and <coughs> yep. see if we can make a bigger portion. Correct. So part, part of it was we were being pulled there by a lot of customers, mm -hmm. um, but also our business centers around you know, fast growing Silicon Valley companies. And so okay. there are not that many of them here in Australia. Okay. So for us, it was um, jumping over there. Okay. So uh, what... Uh, was your business size in terms of employees in Australia yep. and what is it now? Yeah, so when we first looked at going to the US, we were about, uh, I think, 50 to 60 people in Australia. Um, remember, 2009 was when the financial crisis happened. Um, and so did you move just as the crash happened? Uh, straight after. So there was an opportunity for us where the US dollar and the Australian dollar had changed yep. um, and the Australian dollar had gone up. That was part of the driving factor for us, which was, hey, uh, things are cheaper now to go to the US, uh, so let's go and do that. Mm -hmm. So we had about 60 people in Australia. Now we're, we're just on about 20 right. here in Australia. Okay. Um, All right. So the first job was to recruit. How did you recruit stuff? Um, so I flew a couple of people over uh, with me to get started. And then, again, 2009 was when the US market was a little bit depressed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we put out advertisements and, um, you know, recruiting from that. So we actually timed it really well. Uh, I think if you went over now, it would be totally crazy. So we got uh, pretty cost-effective leases at that stage. Um, we were able to get good candidates when they were applying. Um, over time, it became more and more challenging like it is now where you've got the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's mm -hmm. and the Googles uh, effectively uh, recruiting graduates before the final year. Um, but not. Not everybody wants to work for Facebook, uh, and also you know companies like Google have very stringent hiring requirements. So do you and, have to pay um, more than those companies, or can you pay less? No, I, I don't think we pay more. Um, I, I think they're after a specific profile of person, mm -hmm. and and all those companies fight over those resources. Right. Uh, whereas I think we're after, you know, being being in a uh, more of a services role. You're not necessarily after the um, 
PhD person who can't communicate, you're more after someone who can communicate technology. Right. So we work with a lot of local universities and right. and um, so and recruiting that. in America, recruiting yep. staff, is that the same as recruiting in Australia? Do you <coughs> is there more of a need to have a recruiter a recruiter involved or you know, um, what's the difference between what you're doing in Australia and doing yeah. in America? So we, we, we run the same things. So a lot of it we, we generate demand and um, you know push people to the website and try and find cultural alignment. Mm. Um, so I think that, that part's pretty similar. Um, the, the biggest difference is more about packaging, salaries, and, and you know, I think in Australia it's pretty clear cut. You have superannuation, everyone gets the same thing, away you go. So in Australia you just pay them, say, 100 grand, and you give them 9%? 9, 9%. 9.25 or whatever yeah. it is now, right? For superannuation, for superannuation. Which they get when they're 60. Correct. And how does it work in America? <clears throat> US is it's a little bit different because the the healthcare system is is effectively privatized. So, you know, we have um, uh, you you have a job offer, then you have how much uh, what benefits come in. So benefits is a big thing so for let's people. So say you offer a hundred k. Yep. How, how, how does um, so so we have a. Um, uh, benefits that we have a certain amount that we say, look, out of all of the medical packages, we'll pay up to this amount, and you can pick whatever you want that fits under yeah, that, or, or pay a little bit more. Um, so that'll vary uh, year to year, and it's actually been going up significantly. Um, might be six or seven hundred dollars uh, okay. per person per month. Up per right? month. Oh, yeah. Right. So um, and every those prices get set every year, okay. uh, and so that's what we so allocate. Maybe six grand goes as well to this. Yeah, that's just yeah, health. The health. Health, dental, and, and um, uh, optical, right. um, and, and as a company, you can choose what you want to do. You could say, "Hey, I'm just I'm going to pay full medical for everybody, but on the cheapest plans, and it might just be a couple hundred bucks, or I'm going to give them the Rolls Royce or what have you." Um, Is this a big and, thing um, that they care about it, during the? Interview? Yeah, it's it's a very big thing because um, in in the United States, if you don't have health care through your employer, it's very hard to go. It's very expensive. To get healthcare direct, right, right, because then they start testing whether you've got pre-existing conditions, and there's a, there's a lot of uh, it's a big thing for somebody to know. Great, I'm on the plan I want. I've got the coverage I need. So in there America, do they want more to be employees rather than not wanting to be contractors? Um, yeah, I would say so. so Just in our experience, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, in our limited experience mm -hmm. of what we what we sample. Um, We've had very little turnover in the team that we've got. Mm. Uh, very loyal, very hardworking, um, you know, kind of team and very high energy. So. Right. And how many guys do you now have in Silicon Valley? In Palo Alto, we're, we're about 35. Right. Now. So you've really grown. So yeah, it's, it's done well, and we're, we're I mean we're an organically grown company, mm. right? So and uh, we haven't taken any external money. Um, so it's no, it's working well there. And and last year we also opened up in Latin America to to help. Um, you know, spread time zones and, and, um, okay. and scale. All right. So, um, what percentage of your business is now American? Uh, yeah. So we went, we went from about fifteen percent in two thousand nine. We're at about seventy percent wow. now. Um, wow. Seventy to eighty percent. So depending on the exchange rates and things. Um, and so yeah. And how did your Australian more. business do while the boss is overseas? Yeah, it's been it's it hasn't been you know on life. I said there was no difference. Um, Has it taken a step back? Um, I think the U.S. has just grown. Right. So whereas Australia, especially with the economy in the last you know, last couple of years, hasn't really done much with such a high dollar, the amount of imports that we can bring here in terms of ex um, jobs outside of the country that we would bring here, it's not as cost effective to do. Right. Um, so uh, I, my experience is, is it's the, the IT market has grown quite a bit in the last few years um, while you've been gone. Yeah, in certain areas. Um, so, I mean, globally it has. Um, so our, I mean, our company has grown significantly, and our focus has been more on the U.S. market, given okay. given the, the size of that market and what happens. Um, I think in the, the space we were in, we were doing a lot of integration work in 09, and the financial crisis kind of stalled a lot of things that were happening in that area. Yep. Um, and so for us, it was, hey, full attention over in the U.S. and keep growing, and okay. that's what we've been doing. Um, but uh, the last few months, we, we made some pretty senior hires here in Sydney. Um, right, and it was actually started growing again. So we found, so it was more, you know, my leadership was over there. So again, yeah, if you're thinking of moving a business to a different country, you need strong leadership in all places, mm, right? True. 
Um, and we knew that going into it, so it was our focus to, to move that way. Um, but uh, Ray, Ray Bradbury, who's our, our VP uh, that we've hired, is now running in Sydney and doing mm -hmm. a great job and getting that team running. I mean, we just ran a, a breakfast event for you know, 50 customers turn up. We went through a lot of Alassian stuff and we do a lot of work in that space. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so is there anything else about the difference in employees uh, from an American employee and an Aussie? Um, yeah, I, I would think um, if you had to categorize like mm -hmm. you know, who would put more hours in or more serious about their career, I would think that in, in the US there's a lot more attention paid to career. Right. Uh, than here, and as a result of that, there's probably you know more hours they get plowed into things. You think they're more loyal um, than Aussies? Um, certainly, our guys are. Right. Um, actually, our Aussie guys are loyal as well. Mm. Um, but in terms of the on, on the US side, um, very. Um, uh, I guess they, they 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 like to be led and be part of a team and part of a culture. Right. A very big thing for them, and I think that's you know through the college system, everyone's always part of some kind of. Uh, community, yeah. community groups and, and mm. so forth. So there's always this this desire to be part of a team, mm. whether it be sports or what have you, um, which actually makes for great energy and great right. great growth in the company. So, you know, I've been here for the last seven weeks, and the team there is you know doing a great job, mm. kind of holding things together, and um, you know I think they're they're doing fine without me. So, so uh, going to the other side of things, yep. uh, selling selling yep. services. Yep. Consulting. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in America versus Aussies? Um, the size of the contracts. Okay. In terms of legal, there's a lot of. Um, uh, you know, it's a very litigious country. Mm -hmm. um, we've never been caught up in any of that. The, the flip side is that some of the agreements you have with customers take you a long time to negotiate through, right. because the procurement departments there are very well trained. Mm -hmm. um, so where you can have things with online clickables and credit cards and everything, it's, right. it's very advised, very good. So you're, it, you're selling services as fixed price or just uh, um, do and charge? No, we don't, we, we, we don't do any fixed price. Well, right. We rarely do, do fixed and price. And they're still complicated stuff. contracts, even um, just do and charge? Yeah, because a lot of it's about derivative, derivative work and liability. What's derivative So, work? for example, hey, you're coming in to do, do some consulting for me. How do I know the code you're giving me is not something you've copied and pasted from somewhere else that I can get sued for a patent on later on? Ah, oh, right. Uh, that's all, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. So it's all indemnification and the level of insurances and stuff. Okay. So we have a full-time legal person now in the company that just goes through contracts oh, great. to okay. do that. Right. Um, which is handy because we get a little bit of that work here, you know, but um, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good to have. Okay. And what about selling products? Is there any difference? Like, do um, you have to buy them more grog or...? No, we don't do any of that stuff. So we, we're very similar to Atlassian where we don't do any kind of schmooze selling or anything like that. We, we allow customers to buy from us. Um, we do short, sharp engagements. Mm -hmm. Get in, help, assist and get out. Um, versus like do in complete deployments of, of things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of been our model to help right. with scale. So our model is more about empowering existing teams within a customer mm. to build a project and providing assistance along the way yep. um, and training and support and so forth rather than just you know, all right. doing all the jobs for them. Okay, so you got any um, uh, final words of wisdom for anybody <coughs> considering going to the US? Yeah, I mean, reflecting on it, I would say just do your research and, and, and um, I there's a lot of misconceptions out there mm. and there's a lot of free advice that people will give you. And I think you need to just do your data and do your research. So we, we knew where we were going. Mm -hmm. So in the 12 months before that, I used to get up at 4 a.m. every day and I was a salesperson working out of the U.S. office virtually. Oh, uh, were you, right. You know, I was here yeah. in Sydney. And so you know, we had sold seven figures of business in the last 12 months and delivered it remotely. Yeah. So when I landed in the U.S., it wasn't like, oh, we're here to open. It was like, yeah, we're already doing work here. Yeah. Okay. And um, so there's that. The, the only other ones you get caught out on is the, the U.S. tax system. So if you're the if you're the person going there, you need to do some good planning before you go. Um, things so like are you talking about the accounts, the, the individual well, on the on the individual side, and then also on the company side. Right. So in the on the company side, yep. uh, What accounting system do you use in Australia? So we use NetSuite. NetSuite, and, and is that a we, we use it globally. Right. So we we rolled that out globally to right. keep everything in sync. Okay. And so yeah. that's your 
your, your accounting system. That's our accounting system. Before that, we used uh, Microsoft GP. Yep. And, um, but then we had to have a separate setup for uh, US and for Australia, and right. there was no consolidation between them. Right. And so with NetSuite, we have all that consolidated and online. Okay. So. And in terms of all the, the rules for submitting returns, is it's, has it it's, been a lot of pain? It, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of expense. Mm. And if you're, uh, I think you need to be a very proactive, you need to have, if you're an existing business, you need to have a very proactive uh, accounting team who's already on top of things right. and get the right advice mm. from you know, a, a top tier uh, accounting firm to help with things. Mm. You know, in our case, we flipped the business up to the US, so our headquarters is now there. Yeah. And there was a whole stack of work involved with doing that. Mm. So. Okay, yeah. well, it's been fascinating. Thank you, Rob. And yeah. with that, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.